Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS and in this video I'd like to introduce you to another SageMaker capability that was launched yesterday at reInvent and this one is SageMaker Pipelines. SageMaker Pipelines is integrated with SageMaker and SageMaker Studio as you would expect and I'm going to walk you through the creation and deployment of an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline from pre-processing to training to deployment okay so this is uh, a capability that should be interesting both to data scientists machine learning engineers and to uh, ops teams um, it's really it's really targeted at those two uh, kind of uh, uh, of teams um, it's it makes it easy to create your uh, machine learning pipelines in studio where you can easily automate and replicate um, your sequence of steps. And, uh, and it also makes it easy for ops teams to, uh, to guarantee that only approved models are deployed in production and with the right level of automation. So in this video, I'm gonna wear those two hats, um, uh, data science and ops, and, uh, and I'll make sure to point out uh, when I'm playing each one of those roles, okay? So let's get started. Um, so in Studio, you can find the pipelines uh, here, of course, right? And you can also see them in the, in the launcher. So if we click on uh, new project, this should work for us. Let me zoom in a bit. And the first thing that we immediately notice is that we have templates, okay? So uh, we have built-in templates for model deployment, uh, model building and training, and model building, training, and deployment. Okay, so these are built-ins, and uh, you can also add your own. Here, I don't have any, but you can write your own templates and, uh, and make them available to uh, your teams, okay? So let's go and select the building, training, and deployment template. And I'm going to do this one in real time. I'll pause, you know, to skip uh, 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 waiting times, but let's try and do this end to end. Okay, so I'm selecting a template. Let's give it a name. Um, all right, create a project. Okay, and now it's creating the project. So if you're a data scientist, um, you just have to wait, <laughs> right? It's completely automated, and uh, and after a few minutes, we will see a new project being available in Studio. So after a few minutes, the project is ready, and we can see some of the uh, artifacts. So we see two uh, repositories, right? We can see the uh, the code commit repos here. Uh, and we can let's clone them. We'll need them locally to inspect the code. And again, there's one for model building and there's one for model deployment, right? And the rationale for this is the model building part is the, you know, I would say the data science part where you uh, you experiment and uh, and train again and again. Uh, and of course, you want automation there. Uh, and at some point you're going to train a model, it's going to get published, and there needs to be some quality gate uh, before this makes it to production. And so that's why we have a second repository with artifacts to actually de deploy the, the model in production. And potentially you would have different permissions on those Git repos, uh, one for data science teams, one for ops teams. So it makes sense to have those two things uh, in different repos. Okay. Um, so we have those two uh, repos, we'll take a look in a minute, uh, and we see uh, the, the pipelines, um, let's see what's going on here, okay, we can see the, the pipeline is executing uh, already automatically, okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, go back to this later on, okay, so we see automation at work. So what is actually going on here? So let me show you the two repositories. So first, 
let's look at the model building repository. So this contains all the artifacts needed to build your machine learning pipeline with the different steps, run them uh, automatically, and uh, register the train model uh, once your uh, once your process your training process is over. Okay, and then you can deploy it. So here, uh, I will deploy it in this account for testing staging. Let's say, um, and then we would need manual approval to deploy it for production. Okay, but let's look at the data science part first. So we have a notebook here, a sample notebook that shows us um, the different steps that are required to uh, to uh, build this pipeline. We can see all the all the scaffolding code and the artifacts that are available, and we can see the the sample data set and the sample uh, project included here is uh, is a linear regression model based on the Abalone data set, right? So the Abalone is a kind of shellfish and uh, we try to predict the the age of, uh, of uh, individual uh, shelf uh, shellfish <laughs> by uh, looking at uh, physical dimensions okay so uh, it's it's a toy example but it's enough for our purpose okay so we'll see this here and the rest is uh, is you know built-in code that probably you don't need to look at okay so let's see what the pipeline looks like okay so you need to go to pipelines abalone pipeline.py okay so this is the code that you would write uh, to build the sequence of steps that uh, build your machine learning uh, pipeline right the one you want to follow and uh, and automate and this is based on a pretty simple Python SDK, uh, and if you've worked with uh, you know Scikit-Learn pipelines or Spark pipelines before, uh, it's it's very similar. You know, you define each individual step and then you chain them uh, as a pipeline, and you can pass parameters to the pipeline and you can execute the pipeline. Right? There's, I mean, it's not it's not a rocket science here. Okay, so let's take a look at the the different steps. So we see we have. Uh, processing step okay so pre-processing the data set maybe normalizing values etc etc okay so uh, uh, we the, here's the actual step and we use this uh, scalar processor uh, object from the, the SageMaker processing SDK so running a scikit-learn uh, script with SageMaker processing as a first step okay uh, and then we have a model training step using XJBoost. And we can see here we use the normal SageMaker estimator, hyperparameters, etc. And then we add a training step to the pipeline. So the third step is another processing step where we use, again, uh, a Python script to uh, run model evaluation on uh, on our model okay so we build a script processor object from SageMaker processing and then we add this as a pipeline step then based on a conditional step that we can see here okay so we have those uh, we have the ability to define conditions uh, if the the model accuracy uh, in this case the mean square error is lower than six then we register the model okay to uh, to SageMaker pipelines if the model is has a higher error then we don't register it okay it's, we consider it uh, uh, as not accurate enough and we don't want to go forward okay so we define the condition and the registration step okay and then pretty much we put everything together okay we put all those steps so processing the data set, training the model, evaluating the conditional step uh, leading to model registration if the model is accurate enough. Okay, so as you, as you can see, it's, this is really simple. Um, there's nothing, again, if you're used 
to working with, let's say, scikit-learn pipelines, uh, this is this is very very similar. Okay, so this is the machine learning pipeline that we want to run. Fine. Okay, uh, and we can see there's the pre-processing script. Okay, which is uh, vanilla code, and there's the evaluation script that's vanilla code. Okay. It's just adapted to run on SageMaker processing, but nothing complicated here. Okay, so this is what you would need to write. Uh, this is what you would need to provide in uh, in your uh, in your project. Okay. Okay, so once you have that, right, uh, you can start running your workflow. Okay. Um, and if we go to our pipeline here okay we can see this is executing okay because automatically uh, it started to execute when we when we uh, created the project so we can actually inspect this okay so this is pretty cool it's all green, <laughs> so that's good news. So we can see each of the steps. We can see training metrics, validation metrics. So uh, validation means square error is less than six. So it looks like we uh, um, it looks like we register this. Okay, the conditional step actually ended up true, so we registered the model. Okay. Yeah, mean square error was 547, so that's okay. It's under the threshold that we defined, okay? So the pipeline completed successfully and the model was registered, but it wasn't deployed, okay? And the reason for this is because one of the parameters of this uh, pipeline is called model approval status, and it's set to pending manual approval. So let's find this in the code just to make sure we understand what this does. Okay, so going back to the model build, code, pipelines, abalone, pipeline.py. If we go and find the model registration, okay, uh, we see a, an approval status parameter, okay, and this is set to model approval status, which is one of the parameters that are passed to uh, to the workflow, okay. And so, if you pass this pending manual, here it is. If you pass the pending manual approval, the default value here, then model the model is registered but not deployed. Okay. So, how do we deploy it? Because of course we want to test it. So, uh, starting back from the project here, okay, my pipelines demo. If we go to model groups, we can see uh, models associated with this pipeline. Okay, so there's only one, we only train once. Okay, if we click on this, okay, it says status updated to pending manual approval, which is exactly what our uh, Python pipeline did, right? So I can update the status and say, yes, I would like this model to be deployed for staging update status so now that the model has been approved it's going to be automatically deployed and this is based wearing my hub as the model status has been updated to approved uh, it's going to be deployed automatically okay so we just have to wait for a few minutes to see it in studio but wearing our ops at, uh, we could see in CloudFormation that a new template is executing. And of course, it's creating the endpoint, okay? And this is part of the second repository, okay? All the deployment activities here. And we can see we have, uh, we have a deployment uh, CloudFormation template and it's either using a staging configuration or a prod configuration, okay? And this is what we see here, okay? So staging, 
is called staging and is deploying on M5 large. You could have extra parameters, okay? So of course, this repo would be controlled by the ops team because they're in charge of, uh, of deploying and production infrastructure, okay? It's a collaboration, but they would want to know what's going on here, right. okay? So. Uh, so if we go back to projects and open this, okay, we've got our repositories, pipelines, model, and endpoints, okay? And it's, it's still creating. It's still After a few minutes, the endpoint is in service and I could use it for testing, right? This is just a normal SageMaker endpoint and I can use uh, my testing script and you know send predictions, etc., etc. Okay, so that's fine. Our um, our pipeline ran um, end to end from data processing to training to model evaluation to model registration. Um, we had this uh, approval step uh, because we wanted to have a a first quality gate uh, to avoid deploying models that are not good enough. Uh, but the gate was still within our control, right? Uh, we could run our uh, testing scripts on the model and say, okay, it's good for staging deployment. So click, uh, set the model to approved, deploy, and then it gets deployed. So now I would run more testing. Uh, and at some point, I would, I would want to deploy this for production, right? For real traffic. So this is where you need proper approval from, you know, ops or, you know, whoever is giving you the, the green light to deploy. You cannot do this in studio, uh, which, which is fine, I guess, right? There needs to be another quality gate where you say, okay, go for prod. So, Whatever uh, communication uh, medium you use, you know, maybe you ping somebody on Slack, maybe you create a Jira ticket, maybe you have to do some something else, you know, it's up to you. You can define your process. But now what needs to happen is someone with the appropriate um, uh, AWS permissions is going to manually approve the model to be deployed in prod. Okay, so here for simplicity, I'm doing it in the same account, but in real life, this would certainly happen in different accounts. Okay, probably you have dev accounts and staging accounts and prod accounts. Um, and that's okay because um, this service actually supports cross, ac cross account deployment. So you can, you can set that up. You don't need to copy and models and, and, and do, you know, um, uh, complex things to to get uh, to get the model in prod. Okay, just use cross account deployment. <clears throat> so here I have this in this workflow by default. I have uh, a manual approval step. So someone reviewing testing reports and so on would say, okay, you know, model is good for production. Hopefully, okay and they would approve this okay and this would unlock uh, the last step of the code pipeline pipeline which is deploying to prod okay so uh, it's going to take a few seconds to uh, to kick off here we go and you can see it's in progress and so now uh, we are deploying the model for prod okay again doing it in the same account but we could do this and we should do this in a different account, okay? So you gotta be friendly to your ops team because probably they're gonna do this, okay? And if I refresh this, you know, hooray, I can see this model being deployed for production. And again, we have to wait for a few minutes for this to happen. And then you have your live endpoint in production. So congratulations, you've made it to the end of the pipeline. Okay, so there you go. Um, that's SageMaker pipelines. So summing things up, um, it's both for data science teams and ops teams. Um, data science teams will use the Python SDK to create pipelines and automate their uh, machine learning workflows in a very simple way. 
This is really similar to scikit-learn pipelines and other pipelines. So as you saw, the, the code is really is really easy. Um, then collaborating with the ops team, you can uh, work on model deployment, providing a simple um, cloud formation template. And you can see this one is, is really simple. It's all about you know the endpoint config and the endpoint. And it's good practice to have different environments, staging and prod, so you can uh, you can work with them and uh, and um, you know put all those pieces together, and um, and you can use of course the built-in projects to 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 start from. Right, you don't need to write this st stuff from scratch. Okay, they're a good starting point for your own workflows. Okay, so um, I think this is a really nice service. A lot of customers have been. Uh, I've been waiting for something like this, uh, giving data science team flexibility and automation and robustness. Um, you know, just run those, uh, execute your uh, machine learning pipelines, and and you know, don't wait and don't run stuff in notebooks that is always error prone, etc. And uh, and it also works for ops teams because they know exactly what's going on. They they can set a approval and, and uh, whenever they need to. So hopefully it's going to work for everybody. Okay. So I hope this was useful. Again, happy to uh, listen to your feedback. Feel free to get in touch. Ask me questions. You know, and always happy to, uh, to learn uh, how you're using those services. Well, that's it for this one. Um, I think there will be more next week, but we'll see about that. Okay. Definitely not the end of the SageMaker story for... Uh, reinvent 2020. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thank you.